Table views are so powerful that this is the first in a series of videos dedicated to these wonderful model elements. In this video we'll cover the basics before we progress to some of the more advanced concepts. Now I'm sure you're already familiar with the concept of tables. Data is organised into columns and rows, and where a column intersects a row we have a cell. If you've ever used a spreadsheet application before, then you will have entered data manually into those cells, and maybe had some cells calculate their values based on other cells. In Rhapsody things are a little different. For the most part you don't enter data directly into the cells. Instead Rhapsody generates the cell data from the information already in the model browser. However, as you'll see later, we can change that and use tables as a very powerful way of entering model data. Tables in Rhapsody are made up of two model elements, table layouts and table views. A table layout defines the structure of the table. Is it a table of requirements for example, or a table of use cases, or both? What columns are in the table? Each column can display a particular piece of information about a model element, for example its name or its description. Table layouts are reusable and can be stored in profiles to make it easier to share them and use them in other models. CSV importers are a special kind of table layout and we'll cover those in another video. A table view is Rhapsody's name for a table. Now there are only two characteristics of a table view that you need to define. The table layout on which the table is based, that gives it its structure, and then the scope. That filters the table to show only elements from a specific part of the model. Now that might be set to the project level to show everything, or it might be set to a specific set of packages, as well as an option for the owner of the table. So let's take a look at tables in Rhapsody. To start with we have a simple model. Two packages with two use cases in each, and another package where I'll create my table views and my table layouts. So let's add a new table layout. Now, layouts can be owned by packages or profiles, which makes them reusable between projects. This is a SysML model, so we'll find that model element in the Views and Layouts Add New menu. In a UML model that menu is instead called Tables and Charts. The Criteria tab in the Features view is where we specify the nature of the content. For example, the type or types of model elements that will be in the table. Let's choose use cases. Now if I start typing the word use, then the list is automatically filtered, making it much easier to select the model element type I want. So each row in our final table will be a use case. Here we're selecting the criteria in a very simple way, but this is the standard search dialog. So there are many other ways. For example, we could base the table on the results of a query. On the columns tab, we add however many columns we want in the final table. I'll click the add button twice to add two columns. The type selector is a kind of category, and it controls the available options in the property selector, which is where we choose the column content. Let's put that first one back to general, that is properties that every model element type has, such as its name. For the second column let's choose description. Now if we want to change the column header in the table, we simply click inside that field and type in a new name. Now we can choose to have a starting width for the column, but this isn't very intuitive, as we have to enter the value in pixels, so that's a field I never use. Next we can add a table view. Now we could add an empty one using the Add New menu, and then select the table layout on which it will be based. But here's a tip. We can right click a table layout and select Create View. Here in the Features view we can see that the layout has already been set, but of course I can change that and change it to use a different layout. Before we open the table we define the scope. 
And the default setting for a new table view is the model, that is the root element in the model browser, plus its descendants. So in our case, that means the table will show all of the use cases, regardless of where they are in the model. Double clicking a table view opens it in the diagram editing area. There we can see all four use cases and none of them have a description. Now it's tempting to think we can click inside the description cell and edit it directly in the table. But as I mentioned earlier, that's not the case, at least by default. Selecting a cell does focus the features window on the model element for that row, however. So I can change it there. If I click apply, then the table updates. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can make these table cells editable and we'll cover how to do that in one of the later videos in this series. For now, though, let's change the scope of the table. Let's clear the project checkbox and then we'll select just package one. Now, the table won't automatically update from that change, at least until I click refresh over here in the toolbar. Now it only displays use cases from that package. So table content is dynamically populated from the model browser. Now, of course, you can have as many tables as you like. Tables can also be sorted and filtered. Each column in the table has these options. So you can, for example, apply multiple filters. If I apply a filter to the name column, then it gets an icon indicating that a filter is active. Now, that's very useful because these options persist even between Rhapsody sessions. If I close and then reopen this table, it opens in that filtered state. Now we can not only view model data using a table, but we can use it to create new elements as well. On the toolbar on the right here is a button to add new model elements. Now here we can create any number of new use cases and we can also choose where those new elements will go if our scope was multiple elements. If I add, let's say, 10 new ones, then not all of them appear in the table immediately because that filter is still active. If I remove it, well, now there they are, they're all visible again. That's all for now. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series to learn more about table views. And as always, look out for more Rhapsody features you may have missed.